starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Gesford. We start with breaking news tonight. Vermont legislators have passed the largest ever budget in state history. The House vote was 90 to 53, and the centerpiece of the $8.5 billion spending plan is an about $150 million investment in child care. Tonight, the child care bill received supermajority support from across the political spectrum. It will inject money and resources into educator recruitment and retention efforts while raising employee wages to shore up staffing. The legislation expands financial assistance to families earning 575% of the federal poverty level too, impacting more than 7,000 additional children. Of hardworking families are facing impossible decisions, whether to continue working, whether to go back to work, whether to leave Vermont, or even whether their parents or in-laws can find housing and come help with child care. The bill is funded by a 0.44% payroll tax split between all Vermont employers and employees. Advocates are now calling on Governor Phil Scott to sign it into law. In a statement, Let's Grow Kids CEO Allie Richards says the bill will change the trajectory of our state. She also writes in part, quote, this bill will stabilize our workforce and our economy, will shape future generations and will create a more affordable Vermont. Our Calvin Cutler has been following the budget debates all day as lawmakers inch closer to a decision. He joins us live now from the State House. That decision was just made, Calvin, in the 11th hour. What else is in the budget? Yeah, moments ago, Christina, lawmakers gave the green light to that budget, and I'll tell you, it is packed with all kinds of investments, from housing to money for specialized service providers, free school meals for Vermont kids, and workforce development initiatives, and more. Now, this budget also includes big investments in housing development, including some changes to Act 250. And there's investments in climate change, getting the clean heat standard started after lawmakers overrode the governor's veto this week. We held our 20 votes in the Senate and we had over 100 in the House and we overrode the governor during the normal session. So it's hard for me to imagine how we would have done much more. But the debate was overshadowed by housing for the homeless ending this summer. Some are gravely concerned about potentially thousands losing shelter. The housing bill has about $120 million in investments, but it remains to be seen when that money will pay off and how many people will be able to access housing. Now, several Democratic and progressive lawmakers voted against the budget because of this, hence the vote being 90 uh, votes in favor. Kelvin, some elements of this budget rely on new taxes and fees. Is this something Governor, the Governor Scott can support? Well, Christina, that's been Governor Scott's concern all along. He's been adamantly opposed to new taxes and fees on Vermonters, uh, including fee increases at the DMV, which are also part of the transportation bill that lawmakers passed. Now, Governor Scott says that he appreciates the shared, um, the, the shared priorities between him and lawmakers, but he says that new taxes and fees are making Vermont unaffordable. Here's what he said to lawmakers in the Senate earlier tonight. With high inflation and the looming economic storm clouds on the horizon, Vermonters are nervous and already overburdened uh, enough. And to be clear, if we're taking money out of one pocket to put it in the other, that's not making anything more affordable. Now, right now, lawmakers are preparing to adjourn for the night. Uh, governor Scott will speak in front of House lawmakers, then people will head home. Now, the governor has threatened to veto the budget over the size and scope of it. And if he does, uh, lawmakers have scheduled a veto session for June 20th. So uh, in just a few weeks, they will be back here at the State House for a veto session. Reporting live at the State House, Calvin Cutler, Channel 3 News. Calvin, thank you.